Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm your host, Cameron, and today we are going to be doing a Click Team tutorial uh, series for a 5 Nights at Freddy's fan game, or rather, how to make a 5 Nights at Freddy's fan game in Click Team Fusion. So, I plan to do this into a full series. Um, if you follow me on Game Drop, you would already know that I was planning to make this into a full series for a long time. Uh, we are currently on part one, which is the menu. Um, but of course, we're going to do other stuff in the series too. Um, by the end of the series, there should be a total of about, I think, 22 to 23 tutorials. Um, most of them are going to probably be just some optional tutorials, like, um, I don't know, like a setting screen, um, like a puppet mechanic for the game. Um, and some of it's obviously going to be the essential tutorials, but this, I'm going to throw in some optional ones too. Um, but I'm, I'm going to do all of the essential tutorials first and then just do all the optional ones afterwards because I feel like it's going to be much easier for anybody to fo uh, follow along with it. Now, if you're curious about what each tutorial is going to hold, I actually made a document, um, a three-page document with a thousand words in it going over every single tutorial that I am going to be doing. Um, I will leave a link in the description to the Google document that shows the document full of um, tutorials we're going to do to the links and all that. So check that out if you want. But we're going to get started here. And um, so when you get Click Team Fusion for the first time, um, all depending if you have the Click Team Free View uh, version or Click Team Full Price, which is 100 or Developer Mode, which is 200 um, this is going to be the first screen. Uh, screen that you see um, Also bear in mind I forgot to tell you guys this but this tutorial is this this tutorial series is gonna be kind of centered around five minutes of Freddy's one so two doors camera system all that because I Feel like it's much much easier to learn with the two doors on each side Kind of like five minutes of Freddy's one to do like a FNAF 2 area kind of because not everybody's gonna make a FNAF 2 fan game or FNAF 1 fan game either but I just feel like more people would want to make a FNAF 1 fan game as it's much easier to make but anyway uh, when you load up the click team fusion for the first time um, you should see this screen right here um, to the left is start and recent um, in recent it's just a bunch of projects that I have down here um, you don't got to worry about that uh, there should be nothing there if you've never used click team fusion there uh, or click team fusion before but it doesn't matter we're gonna go uh, up to start new application and uh, here we are we are now into your game so right now there is only the application and only one frame each frame is just a different part of the game so for example frame one is going to be our menu so this is gonna be our menu frame two could be night one frame three could be like 6 a.m. anything like that um very easy stuff so we're gonna go to application one and right off the bat we're gonna rename these two johns real quick so i'm gonna go to application one and you can really rename it whatever you want um it the name will only show up here if you want to actually save this as an mfa file um you can just go up to this floppy disk uh just save Put it anywhere you want and just title it like Five Nights at Freddy's. And then boom. You have your tutorial down. Or not tutorial, but you have like your title down and stuff. Um, so we have Five Nights at Freddy's down. That's our tutorial. Um, and we're going to go to frame one. And we're going to rename this. Um, to rename it, by the way, um, you can either double click it. Or no, you can't. I'm lying. Um, you can right click on frame one. And go down to rename or you can press F2 and just rename it menu perfect now we have that down and the layout might be a little different for you guys um, but really you should see so far all we did was just fiddle around with the workspace workspace toolbar um, mine's laid out a little different um, I have workspace toolbar up here properties down here layers over here um, but you can set it up any way you want, and it's very easy. All you gotta do is just grab your different window and just drag it around anywhere you want. Like, if I want this uh, workspace tool right up here, I can leave it up there. If I want properties, like, down here, I can leave it down there. Or you can just kind of stick it to the wall like that um, by using these little pointers and whatnot. Uh, I'm gonna leave it here 
Um, that's definitely what I meant to do. Um, so yeah, now that we're in this, let's go back to our workspace toolbar. Oh man, oh man, I, I'm messing up. Hold up, let me fix this real quick. Anywho, so okay, wait. Anywho, so we're back here, and uh, you know, just mess around with that if you want. Now, the next step we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna change the entire application's resolution real quick. So, as you can see right here, you got comments, um, you got the name of your uh, different frames. Uh, more frames will obviously appear here as you go along in the series. Um, and right now, uh, we are just looking at the entire application as a whole. And since that's the case, we're actually gonna click onto our application, which is just the name next to our, this little lightning bolt symbol. So click on that and go down to properties. So in properties, you have about six or seven little tabs up here. So you have settings, window, runtime options, values, event, about, and windows. Now you're really only gonna need, um, you're really only gonna need like settings, windows, runtime options. In the future, you're gonna need like text and stuff like that. Not very hard to learn at all, but click onto your application um go right down to window which should just be this little square with a blue border click that and you can change your window and style here so right off the bat we're just going to change our size of our window to what i would recommend so far is just 1280 by 720 um but you can really make it as big as you want you can go 1920 by 1080 um like really anything at all um and this is basically just what you see throughout the whole game um, and we're gonna go down to style real quick, um, which should just be below all the, like, the things you can change. So we go down here. Um, I would scroll down until you see menu. Um, and basically, um, just, I, I would uncheck the menu bar and I would uncheck menu displayed on boot up because, or actually no, keep menu displayed on boot up, but just get rid of the menu bar, um, because you don't really need it at all. So, and that should be it. Uh, oh yeah, I think you should check check um go down to full screen and just check change resolution mode and uh, Allow you to switch to and from Different resolutions So this is gonna be used in the future when if you want to have like a full screen toggle on your setting screen y You want these checked so that the user can actually expand um, Your game into the full window. So there we go. That should be done and now double click onto the menu, which will take you right to, well, your menu. This is your new game. Now, it's a little tight. Um, you, you can see the full frame, but I like to at least see a little bit of the kind of the outlier, the kind of the background and stuff like that. So if you want to, you can actually zoom out by going to this little drop down menu and just selecting how far out you want to go. The default is automatically sent to 100, but you can set it to like 75, or if you want to zoom in even more, 125, stuff like that. Now, for some reason, my click team is bugged, and I can't actually see it. Um, but another way to do this is just go up to view, zoom, and then just do it from here. Um, view also has a lot more zoom options too, like you can go to 800% and 10% and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, here we are. This is your menu. There's nothing here yet, obviously, because we haven't added anything in yet. So, speaking of which, let's just do that right now. Let's just add in some stuff. So what I plan to add in is add in a title, add in a background, add in like a little Freddy to the right, static, um, and even like a new game of continue. Um, we are going to add in like a new game of continue text, and we're also going to make the new game work. We're just going to add a toggle over our text which will allow us to take us to the next frame. So, right now you are currently on layer one if you hover over your layers toolbar. Um, you should be on layer one, and I kinda wanna start off by making a background, so I'm gonna right click and go to insert object. So here we are. This screen right here is everything used for coding. Um, it's just kind of the objects used for coding. It's not like the direct line of code. It's just something to add in. And mostly, the stuff you're gonna only really need in this tutorial series is gonna be like active, counter, um, strings, all that really, because 
they're the easiest to do, and, you know, if you only use these three, you can still make a very stable game. You don't have to use all of these to make a very stable game. Oh, yeah, and also you're going to use I and I in the Pierce 2, which will just allow your game to save. So, go over to Active, uh, just press OK, and Active is kind of like um, just anything that you want to move or anything that's going to be used for coding. Um, so we're going to make this the background, and as you can see, it's a little rhombus, um, and if you hover over it, it's just called Active, which is what the item is called. So if you want to rename this, you can press uh, F2. Oh, what did I just do? You can press F2, or you can right-click and just rename it. And I'm going to rename this, John, to um, Black Background, because that's what we're going to add it. Um, you can really make your background anything, but I'm just going to make my background black because I already have some, I already have assets to put in here. Um, so, once you've done that, you can either right click to edit or you can just double click into it to take you to this screen. Which is basically just the canvas where you can mess around with this little rhombus right here. So, you can do a lot to it. Uh, you can go over to the erase tool and erase it. You can change the size of it. So, I can go like... 11 and I can just make it like that. I can go to 1 and I can do that. Um, I'm gonna control Z that though. Um, you can put a paint bucket tool there so you can fill it in with like blue and stuff. Um, it's, it's very easy to use. I know it looks a little complex, but I'll lead you through. So, in this screen, you can do a lot. Um, to the left side, it's all the tools used to kind of change up your uh, design a bit on your canvas. The right side is colors, and the bottom down here is the frames you want to add in and how fast you want those frames to go. So, this is particularly used for like um, animations. If you want to insert like a GIF, you can make it however long you want. You can make a loop, you can make it repeat itself like five times. You can do any of that. Oh, wrong, wrong button. So, we're not going to do that right now. I'm not inserting no GIFs. Uh, we're just gonna add in a back background, so all we need is just to insert black. So, obviously this rhombus is stuck in the way, we don't want this as the background. So, what you can do is you can go over to your erase tool, which literally has just an eraser over here, and you can erase the rhombus like this, you can change the size of it if you want, or you can go up to this little uh, white page up here to the top left, and you can just clear everything, or you can press Control N, and then boom, you got nothing there. Um, but the thing is, you can't, like, get out of here once you don't, if you don't have, uh, an image, um, but honestly, you're just gonna add in stuff anyway, so it doesn't matter. So, what we're gonna do next is, we're actually gonna make this, uh, drawing right here, or this little canvas right here, the size of our application, which, the size of our application is 1280 by 720 so we want this to be, uh, 1280 by 720 and to change the size of it, you can go over to these little two arrows, um, above the word size, click it, and you can change your width, your height, uh, you can make it proportional, you can stretch it, you can resample it, um, but we're just going to go to width, 1280, we're going to go to height, 720, and boom. Now, you don't have to type in uh, 1280 by 720, like I said before, you can just, if you wanted to fill in your entire, like, application, you would need to type in you would need to type this into how big your application is. So, let's say my application is 1920 by 1280 or, or 1080. I gotta type in 1920 by 1080 so it can fill in the entire canvas. But of course, our application is just 1280 by 720. So, yeah. We got that. Apply it. And now I'm gonna go up to my paint bucket tool or fill tool. This is just fill in the entire canvas, of course. Go over to my colors over here and you can pick any color you want, but I'm going to pick black because it's literally called that background. And just, boom. We're good. We don't have to do nothing else after you got your little image in. Okay. Uh, here we are. We have our back background. Now, the thing is, um, this might not be the most perfect. Um, as you can see, you can see the little white and black dots around the border, uh, which means that our back background is not covering the entire background. Or the entire canvas so if you want to make your life easier um you can right click and you can go over to align and frame and go horizontal center and you can right click again go to align and frame and go vertical center 
Uh, remember, vertical is up and down, and horizontal is left and right. Now, what this will do is, so let's say our little, our, our background's over here. Uh, you can right click it, align and frame, and go horizontal center. So it'll be horizontally center, center with our application, or our frame. But if you're like, oh no, there's not space or anything, you can right click it again and go align and frame and go vertical center. Perfect. Or another way you could do it is you can go up to these little grids up here and just select um, snap to grid. Select snap to grid and just snap it in. Now, another thing too is if you load into your application for the first time, you might see little grid squares. Um, I don't have those, um, but that's right next to the grid with the magnifying uh, or magnet. Um, so you can show it, you can delete it. Um, personally, I don't like to show the grid because it gets in the way and it's a little annoying to see everything. Um, so I just like to get rid of it. So there we go, we got our background in there. Um, next step is we want to insert our Freddy, our animatronic to the right here. Now, I don't want to do this in the same layer as my back or black background because then I can't really do a whole lot of stuff if my Freddy is in the same background because if I do one thing, it might affect the other. So I'm gonna go over to layer toolbar and I'm gonna make a new layer. So you can go up to this uh, page up here that's kind of folded in the corner, which is the new layer. Press it and you got your second layer. Now to insert, watch well, enough, to insert uh, Freddy on your second layer or whatever you want, uh, be sure to click two on your, or just be sure to click your second layer. And then of course, uh, insert object active once again okay click into it and double click it or actually no I gotta rename it real quick so you don't have to rename it I'm gonna rename it though so I'm gonna rename it Freddy perfect uh, I'm gonna double click into it once again you can right click and press edit or you can double click into it and I'm gonna insert a uh, an image of Freddy that I made over at paint.net um, so you go over to the folder if you want to import your own objects just go over to this little folder over here and just press that or you can press Control o and i already have a bunch of assets for this tutorial that i'm going to use so i'm just going to insert freddy right there uh press open um don't import this animation uh you can change your transparent color to anything you want um i would just really change your transparent color all depending if, if all your colors are just different than the ones in your frame so press ok once you have your image and boom you have your freddy looks a little goofy um as soon as you have your freddy on um, press ok and freddy should be over here except he's gone hold up let me press i gotta do that again so he might go out of frame sometimes uh so just press ctrl z or just do that again don't be like me and be an idiot press ok good and we have Freddy now I'm gonna snap this right into here into our entire frame and boom Freddy so we have Freddy there and that should be good now this is just a still image this is not like an animation or anything um I am gonna make a tutorial in the future where you can make your own uh, like twitching Freddy it isn't my code, um, some other dude made the exact code I'm going to use in that video. Um, but I think I might leave a link in the description to the to the tutorial I'm talking about. It's over at Game Jolt. Um, it literally is just a tutorial for how to make your animatronic twitch in the menu. So if you want to ch go check that out, go check it out. Uh, be fine by me. So, but right now we only have a still image. So we have Freddy and obviously... Ooh, this isn't really a menu. There isn't much here. So now we're gonna insert some text now I'm gonna make a new layer for this I'll put this away from my Freddy layer uh, Once again go over to layers toolbar press the new layer and boom go up, Excuse me go up to layer 3 and Just either uh, insert an object or insert a string um, There is two ways to make your title screen or not title screen, but kind of title the game and uh, words, like new game and continue. Um, so insert object and you can either make it a string, which it just lets you just type text into it, 
or you can go into active and make your own like um make your own uh unique design for the game title now personally me i don't have a game title right now um i forgot to make that when i was making these assets so i'm just gonna insert a string it doesn't look as good as a like a custom logo for the game that you make in like uh ms paint paint.net paint tool side all that uh, but if you need a quick title you just go down a string which should just be called word box because that's literally all it is it's just a word box press ok once you have your string selected left click on the frame and uh, as you can see the string is very tiny you cannot see the text so we're gonna make this bigger obviously and to start off we're gonna click it and rename this to title because that's gonna be the title of our game so as soon as you have that um make sure you have your text selected go down over to properties and if you see this uh capital a and lowercase a um just press it it's called uh text options and now you can select your font what you want your style of your font to be the color uh the alignment all that so we're gonna go into font um all depending if you don't want your font to be a different color or anything you don't have to follow this part but if you want your title to be pretty big and pretty different then you guys will just follow this so i'm gonna go to font left click that and it should be just taken to the font window um from here you can scroll down find whatever font you want i'm gonna personally use the font that scott carlton used for his first five minutes fetish fan game which was terminal so i have this terminal text selected um i can either make it bold oblique bold oblique uh, or I can go over to size and make it bigger, which is actually what I'm gonna do. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna make the size of this text, I don't know, let's say 36. Um, now, you can type anything you want into the size. Like, just because you see 4, 5, 7, 10, and 11, you might see more. But if your max text on this scroll bar is like 76, that doesn't mean like the max size of your text has to be 76. It could be anything you want it to be. I can make it 128, uh, 1000, or um, 1, you know. But I'm going to make it 35 because that's pretty big. Press OK. And we have our full text. Now the problem is, this is a little too small to fit in our, in our little string box. So uh, we're going we're gonna to expand it. Uh, to expand it, just click on it once and then click on it again. Not too fast because then you'll uh, edit the text and we're gonna do that right after we expand it so I'm gonna select it and then click on it and these little black squares should appear uh, once you see these little black squares um, just expand it however big you want it you can have it down here um, you can have it like way over here um, but I'm gonna make it kind of something like this kind of big but kind of not big um, and I'm gonna change the color of it to white because black on black you can't see like black text on a black background so we have white text here and i'm just gonna slide that right into my frame um like i said before please make sure that you're inserting everything on a different layer you can insert everything on the same layer if you want to but i i, I would just think it's much easier to kind of categorize your layers like maybe layer one is going to be like your background layer two is going to two is going to be like your animatronic layer three is going to be all of your word toggles and stuff like that so just to kind of categorize everything um but if there's ever a situation where you, you insert a string on let's say layer two and you meant to insert it on layer three you can just hold on to your little text box and go up to the layer you want to take it to it's as easy as that um i can put this back down to layer two if i wanted to or I can put this on layer one if I want to. I can do whatever I want with it. Uh, but I'm gonna put it on layer three so it's in front of everything else. Um, to tell what layer it's on, um, there should be, it's on layer three, so obviously it's three, and then a uh, semicolon uh, one, or no, I think it's just a colon. So it's layer three, and it's uh, the first word on the layer. So we got that. And we're going to double click into it and just title your game whatever you want. I'm going to title it um, Five Nights at Freddy's. This might not be big enough actually. At Freddy's. 
on a budget because that's on 20. And boom, you have all that. Now, obviously, Five Nights at Freddy's on a budget didn't fit my entire frame. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand it a little more. Perfect. And boom, we have our game title. Um, I'm actually going to expand this a little outward a little more. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, and also, if you want to uh, change your different alignments of where the text is, you can go up to where these uh, gray lines are. It might look a little different for you guys, but it, it should act the same way. You go up to these lines, and you can either select uh, a line left, which is what it should automatically be. Uh, you can go align center, which just centers your text. Or you can right align, which just right aligns your text. I'm going to keep it left aligned because that looks good. And we should be good for now. So we have that down. We have our title. And now we're going to insert more strings um, that have continue, new game, settings, all that on there. So we're going to right click again. Insert object. String. Okay. Place it down. Uh, I'm going to go back down to my text options because as you can see, the text is really small again. Um, it has no name to it, which I kind of forgot to rename it. So let's stream my name, rename it right now to New Game Text. Our new game title, let's just title that. Perfect. Ooh, put a W in there. Hold up. Got it. Go down to text options. Once again, it's the lowercase a next to the uppercase a. Click that, go over to font, make it whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna make it terminal again. You can just search up uh, what font you want to. Um, I don't think every single font in the world is gonna be in Click Steam Fusion, but most uh, good ones should be in here. So I'm just gonna go press T, go to terminal, and I'm gonna make the size bit like 20, I think. Should be good. Um, I'm gonna expand it so I can see all my words in the text. I'm gonna change the color of it to white so you can actually see it. I'm gonna bring it right down here and boom. Um, I'm gonna double click into it, um, which allows you once again to change the text. And I'm gonna erase everything and I'm just gonna title this new game. Good. Um, now, we're gonna obviously make more. Um, we're gonna make a, a continue one and an extra one and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, one thing you can do actually, and this is kind of something I like to do, um, you can right click, insert object, and do, you, know, you can insert a string, and then go back down to text options, and change the font, everything like that, um, you can do all that, or, you can right click your current text, or your current string, right click it, and press clone, now, the thing about this is, Clone object is different than duplicate and copy. Um, and basically what I mean by this is, if you clone an object, it's going to keep your exact same format. Um, it's going to add a numerical value to your um, previous name. Or rather, it's just going to keep the same format. So, if I press clone object um, and press OK, it's just going to be called new game title 2 and it's just going to say new game. But, I can actually edit this around as if it was its own object. So I'm going to name this continue. But, if you were to duplicate it or copy it, right click and duplicate, it's just going to be called new game title. That's because these two run on the exact same command since you duplicated it and copied it. Copy does the same thing, same thing too. And if I try to change it to something like bananas, the first file is also going to be called bananas, and we don't want that. So I can rename this to I like men, and guess what? Guess what the first text is going to be called? I like men. So we don't want that, but just clone it. The clone it is way easier. Um, it just formats everything the same, but it doesn't copy the same code. So I'm going to clone it, um, press OK. I'm going to rename this to continue title. Perfect. And I'm going to double click into this and go continue. Nice. So as soon as you've done that, um, we can insert more if you want. Uh, I'm actually going to clone this again. I'm going to rename this to extras title. 
Oh shit. Extras, title. Uh, obviously double click into it. Press extras. Make as many as you want. Um, this is how much I'm gonna put in for now. Um, actually, I might make more because since we're gonna do more for this series, I'm just gonna insert some more. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead after I'm done all this. Um, don't worry, you're not gonna miss out on anything. And uh, yeah. All right. So I have four, uh, five different strings here. Uh, new game, continue extras, custom night, and settings. You don't gotta worry about extras, custom night, or settings in this video. That's just for a future tutorial. So I'm actually just gonna select all these and just put them down here for now. Um, if you wanna know how to select text just like I did, um, you can hold shift, select one thing, keep holding and shift, and just collect an, uh, select another thing, and boom. You can select multiple things at once. I'm gonna control Z that. And now it's time for the toggles. So the thing about this is we're going to obviously code in. You have to click on new game and then you get taken to a different frame. Um, but the thing about this is if you want somebody to click your new game, you want to make a toggle for it. Now, you can keep it as just uh, user clicks on new game. But what this will do is the user physically has to click into the new game like title. And obviously, clicking in between um, the letters is going to happen a lot. So that's why just making a toggle for it is just going to be way, 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 way easier. Now, if you want to see what this looks like so far in an actual game, you can go up to these little areas. Once again, this might all be formatted different, uh, but it should just kind of stay the same. You can go up to this little um, square with the black border and the orange triangle, which will allow you to run the frame. Or additionally, if you want to load in all of your frames that you made, excuse me, that you made, um, you can go run application, which is just three lines of code stacked on top of each other with an orange triangle. But I'm gonna go to uh, run frame, and if I press that, it'll load in a separate window for my Five Nights at Freddy's game. How cool is that? So, as you can see, here's our game. Um, it is full screen right now. Um, obviously because, you know, I, we got rid of the menu bar and everything. So, it's all full screen right now. I allowed it to change from full screen to windowed. That's just kind of what happens. If you don't want this to happen, um, I'm actually at the X out of this. If you don't want this to happen, um, you can just go on to your application. Just click it, go down to window, um, and just go down to menu bar. I think think I did that right pretty sure oh no that's different that's different no 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 but of course we don't want that to be the same you just go down to um what is it called again you can go down to change resolution mode or allow the user to switch from you can take that off to keep it in windowed so you go back to your menu uh you run the frame and boom it's all in a window now I'm actually going to keep it in a window so that you guys can just see everything that's going on. So, here's our game. Good. Obviously, you can't do nothing. You can't collect new game or continue or anything yet because we haven't added nothing in. So, I'm going to X out of this and we're going to add some toggles. So, the next step is to make a new layer. So, we're going to go over layers toolbar um, and just make a brand new layer. And that will be layer 4. And we're going to insert our toggles, which is just going to be... Um, invisible active tools so we're gonna go to active press ok um we're gonna rename this new game toggle now this is the only toggle we're doing by the way um well this is the only toggle we're coding in so far um we'll add toggles for all the other words too but right now we're just doing new game and stuff like that because we don't if we want to make sure we do the continue toggle as our last tutorial because that involves a lot of saving stuff and ionized and just coding and a lot of stuff like that. So I don't really want to bore you guys on the first episode. But once you have your new game toggle, press OK. Um, double click into it. And I'm actually going to get rid of this rhombus or diamond. And I'm just going to color this with my fill tool. Let's say, let's color it green. Why not? So we colored it green. And that's all we need to do. Just press OK once you have a full color. Perfect. And we're just going to drag this over our new game title. 
and we're gonna expand this we're gonna make sure this overlaps our new game so we're gonna expand this like that and expand this like that perfect now we have a green box overlaying our um new game toggle and i'm gonna do this for every single one of my words so in the future i can click on the words and then it takes me to another screen so i'm gonna clone the object down a bit i'm gonna hover over continue rename this to continue toggle continue toggle good uh, i'm gonna copy this actually no I'm going to change the color of this so it doesn't get confusing to yellow. Nice. I'm going to clone this. I'm going to bring this down to my extras. Kind of shorten it up a bit because extras is a smaller word. I'm going to rename it to extras toggle. I'm going to double click into it and change the color to blue. I'm going to guess what? Clone it again, and make sure it hovers all over my custom night. Uh, once again, you don't have to do all this. Um, if if you don't got as many uh, like toggles as I do, so we're gonna call this custom night toggle. Uh, I'm gonna change the color of this to red. Nice, and I'm gonna clone this object again, and I'm gonna make this a lot shorter because setting is a lot shorter than uh, custom night gonna rename this to uh, settings toggle nice and I'm gonna change the color of this to pink hot pink nope that I just made it invisible you're not gonna let me select it okay well it's not letting me select pink I don't know why so I'm just gonna select that and boom we have all of our toggles but the problem is even though we got these nice colorful squares you can't see the text now you can't see the text now. You can see this little S right here, but that's just my fault. So, in order to see your text, we're going to close out of the window. Um, and we're just going to select all of these. Once again, if you want to select them all, um, just click on a square, hold and shift. And just, while holding and shift, just click everything else to select it. Once you have all that, go over to Properties. And go down to uh, Blend Coefficient in the display options it's a blue square with two arrows one going to the right one going down um so go to blend coefficient and just type in something that it makes it easy to see the words but also notice that the colors are still there so i'm going to type in like 150 the max uh blend coefficient you can go is 255 if you type in 255 it just makes them invisible they're still there but they're just invisible. But I'm gonna make it 150 right, right now to make it uh, easy for you guys. And once we have all of that, and we load the frame up again, boom, we can see all of our toggles. So I'm gonna close this, and we're actually gonna begin coding. Well, actually, no we're not. We're gonna right click on our application, because we're only coding a new game right now. And I'm gonna right click and press new frame on the application. You can't do this uh, while on here at all you have to physically go up to your application which is just the word next to the lightning bolt right click um new frame and we're gonna type the take uh type this uh loading i butchered that horrendously loading uh, we're not gonna code in anything for the loading to switch between your frames just double click on whatever you want don't know what just happened um and now we're gonna actually begin coding so once you have all that Go over to this kind of checkerboard up here um, that has kind of like the blue and gray squares centered around it. Um, this is called your event editor. You can also press Control e to also go into this. But I'm going to go to my event editor. And here is your list of commands. So over here are your, what they, what this, uh, what Cliff Team likes to call conditions. A condition is just a line of code. That's all you need to know. Um, next to this is new game and the number one. So this is your first line of code uh, When you press new condition, it just brings you here Which obviously means that you have to mess around with this stuff and just do all that But let me get you guys familiar with this. So Over at the right here you have a bunch of different things that you imported So you have special conditions sound storyboarding controls 
the timer, create new objects, the mouse pointer and keyboard, excuse me, player one, your black background, your Freddy, all your toggles, and all your strings. Now, um, this, all this stuff past here is basically all just um, stuff you import. All of this stuff right here is just stuff that naturally just stays there. So once you have all that, uh, we're actually going to start coding. So we're going to right click on the number one here, right click, insert um, a group of events, which is basically just a folder for uh, coding. Um, it's just kind of a way to organize everything. Um, I like to stay organized when I'm coding. I don't like to have everything just kind of spattered around. So I'm going to title this event, um, let's just call it New Game Toggle. Boom. So here we are. Uh, we made a new kind of folder thing. Um, you can double click on like the long rectangle to close it up and open it so it doesn't overwhelm you at all. Um, obviously, this is going to be a lot more useful when it's like a lot, you know, much bigger lines of code. But right now, we're only really going to put one thing in here. So we're going to go new game or actually new condition. Click on it and go over to. Um, uh, I think we're going to do uh, over to like the keyboard and mouse. We're going to go mouse pointer and keyboard. Go over to the mouse. Uh, user clicks on an object with uh, the left button. You can change this around if you want. You can go right button, middle button, left button. You can make it double click, single click, all that. Press OK. And then go over to your new game toggle, which if you're following along with me exactly, should just be green. So press that. And once you have all that, go over to this little um, chess piece, chessman, um, with the little horse around it. Or actually, yeah, yeah, we're going to do that. So go over to your uh, checkerboard and horse, uh, which is the storyboard controls. Right click, go to the third tab down, which is jump to frame and loading. Now, obviously, if you only have one frame, there are going to be no more frames um, in your little... Uh, storyboard frame window but we're gonna press loading and what this will do is um once we load the application once again running the frame and application is two significantly different things running the frame only runs my menu frame but running the application runs every frame uh so i'm gonna run application so i can so i'm able to get to my loading load it up we have our menu and if I click on new game, the screen should just be completely white. Perfect. Now, the reason the screen is completely white is because we loaded into our loading frame, which has nothing on it. So since it has nothing on it, the only thing you can see is just this white screen. So we have it. We got it working down. Now, that's really all I'm going to teach in this tutorial so far, but I'm going to add in some extra stuff for one. I'm going to make these completely invisible, knowing that they completely work. So I'm going to select them all, hold and control and click on every single one. Go to blend coefficient and type in the max, which is 255. And you can't see them no more, but they still work. Proof of this, you run the application, you press new game, it takes you right to loading. Nice. Next, what you want to do is, um, we don't have to do this, but I'm going to add in static because why not? So I'm going to make a new frame, go up to my layer 5. I'm going to right click, insert object, inactive, OK. I'm going to rename this static, perfect. I'm going to double click into this and I'm going to insert some self, um, some just images of static from the FNAF series. So I'm going to go to import and I'm just going to insert all of my static frames. Now there's a way, there's two ways to do this. One, you can insert all of your frames individually so you can insert eight frames individually or you can import them as an animation if you import them as an animation um i should probably explain this better but basically if you don't import as an animation so okay i, I need to calm down a bit let's take a step back i have eight frames of static here what i could do is one way i could do this is i can individually insert like static one uh i can go make another frame uh, static 2. I can make another frame static 3. 
um, or I can just import as an animation. Now, importing as an animation only works if you have like the number, like kind of numerical values in it. So if I have static one, static two, static three, static four, all that, it's gonna work. But if I have a title like static, static two, static three, then it's not gonna work. It needs to be in a numerical uh, order. Or like I said before, you can just import it like this where you can just go press okay. You have your static, Ooh, zoom out a bit. Um, right click um, down here in the frames, right click, new frame, go to frame two, import frame two or static two and do that. Personally, I'm gonna do um, just insert everything, just insert as animation. And to do that, I'm gonna delete that frame. I'm gonna go to my frame one, import, static one, import as animation, and boom, I have all of my static frames. Now, one problem with this, as you guys might see, is if you look very, very, very carefully down in my frames, um, there are eight frames, obviously, but seven out of eight of them are in the top left corner, but frame one is kind of down in the right corner, and that's because they're not all centered. To center every piece of static you have, go over to frame one, uh, make sure it's the same size as your application, like I said before, forgot to mention that. Uh, go over to Hotspot, which is the little target above the tolerance, or no, actually no, it's just the target with the blue circle into it next to the cycle rotation and the square target thing, and below the text. So, press Hotspot, and you'll be greeted with this screen. Um, you don't have to worry about the uh, X and Y, that's just the position these teeny tiny little uh, circles in. Uh, we want this to be in the middle, so what we want to do is uh, we can go down a quick move, hold an alt on your keyboard, and then just press this middle square. Press this middle square. And then boom. It's in the middle. Perfect. And since we've done that, all of our frames down here are now centered. So if I press play, all of them are centered. But let's say I didn't do that. It would look like this. It would look weird, it would look different, and we do not want that. And we do It would look kind of like this. So, we just want this to go down and just be centered with everything. And once you do that, everything's centered. Um, another thing you can do is, if you have a constant loop of static, you can go over to Direction Options, which is right next to Frames, and just change the speed of it. And you can make a loop it, you can repeat it, you can go back to it. So I'm going to make the speed of this 99 and I'm going to loop it. Once I've done that, now it's going to loop my static forever. As you can see, it's going really fast and it's going crazy with the frames. But you can make this as fast and slow as you want. So I'll, I can make this 50 speed, which is the default. And it looks something like this. Um, I can go down to like 2 and it's going to look like this. Obviously, it's going to be really, really slow which I don't really want, so I'm just gonna go way back up to 99, because that's the speed of the original FNAF Static, and boom. As soon as you have everything down, press OK, and I'm going to just overlay this with everything else. Um, I'm gonna right click, just align and frame horizontal center, align and frame vertical center, and boom. Uh, and I'm also gonna make this blend coefficient like 175, because Kind of like with the toggles, you're not able to see the words and you're not able to see everything on the screen. So I'm going to type in like 175, just type in something where you can see everything on the menu plus the static. You don't want to just see only the static. So I'm going to type in 175 and boom, we have static over our little Freddy and all of our text. So I'm going to run the frame now and as you can see, there's static over my Freddy Fazbear, um, over my text and stuff like that. Um, and obviously, since I ran the frame, I can't click new game because it only one, runs one frame. It doesn't run the entire thing. And that should be pretty much it. But um, if you don't really want your uh, static to overlay your letters and stuff like that, um, you can go over to Layers Toolbar and you can go down to where your letters were, which is... Um, or where your strings were, you can just go over to frame 3 and you can try to select the letters and just kind of overlay them over the uh, static. Um, 
but it's gonna be kind of hard to get the static or get the words because once again the toggles are there excuse me and uh you know all that so i'm not gonna do that in today's episode and i'm actually just gonna conclude it right here um thank you guys so much for watching this uh first episode of this fnaf tutorial um once you're done with everything just go up to this floppy disk and save it now since i already have a file for it i'm just gonna press save um, if you guys enjoyed this episode and you want to see more of this tutorial series, let me know in the comment section down below. I will try to get these out weekly, hopefully. Um, hopefully you guys find this interesting, cool, something different, as this is something that I really like to do. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode. See you guys.